Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. And more specifically, I want to talk about the short term for Bitcoin because over the last 24 to 48 hours or so, Bitcoin has broken an uptrend of support, which we had seen it holding right here. And in fact, it looks like Bitcoin may be going lower from here. So in today's video, I want to talk about whether or not Bitcoin is finally headed towards $3,000. I want to point out some chart formations and how Bitcoin seems to be reacting to them and try to overall get an idea of where Bitcoin is going to be going here over the next couple of days. If we come in here to the minute chart, there's something interesting I want to show you also at the time, which is that Bitcoin has been generally trending downwards for the last couple of hours. But in the last few minutes, Bitcoin actually jumped about 4% here at the time of recording this video. Of course, it may look different or it definitely will look different for you guys when you see this. But Bitcoin jumped about 4% in the span of just a few minutes. A very interesting development, which is definitely going to be tying into our technical analysis in today's video. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. As I showed you earlier, Bitcoin is currently trading just a little bit under $3,700 on Coinbase and a little under $3,800 here on Bitfinex. But the important thing to take away from this here is that Bitcoin is trading below $4,000 and is trading at a down at a lower price than it had been over the last couple of days. You can see we've been generally trending downwards here this morning after rejecting off of this uptrend of support. There are a couple of other chart patterns that we can draw here. For example, we can draw a descending wedge right here with a downtrend of resistance there and a downtrend of support right there. There, and it looked like Bitcoin was going to come down here and try to break this downtrend of support right here and fall below it. But that's where we got that really strong bounce, that really bullish movement that we've seen here over the last couple of minutes. Seems to be Bitcoin actually holding this downtrend of support right here. So we're gonna just we're going to discuss all of this and more later on. But I do want to go ahead and get onto the crypto market recap here at the outset of the video. This video might be a little bit shorter. I've been having some trouble with my computer, which I'm going to give you guys the symptoms for that. And maybe some of you guys out there who are a little more tech savvy than me can give me some help on that at the end of the video. So watch to the end if you want to do that. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and do the crypto market recap. Anyway, Bitcoin is currently trading at around $3,700 across all exchanges. It's down 5% on the day. Nothing really to write home about and nothing really all that special for Bitcoin. One thing that is interesting is, of course, this one-minute movement. As you can see, Bitcoin had a nice jump up here after getting support on uh, pseudo support on this downtrend of support. Anyway, it's down by about 5%. XRP is down by about 4%. Ethereum down 9% under $100. That is a big development for Ethereum. I'd like to see Ethereum get some kind of bounce here. Of course, I'd like to see the entire crypto market get some kind of bounce soon, but Ethereum is trading at a very low level. I have never seen Ethereum trade at two digits. I haven't been in the market long enough to see Ethereum trade down there. When I got into the market, I believe Ethereum was around $140, I want to say. It was something like that. It was far before Ethereum ran to its all-time high. I've been in the market for much longer than that, but nevertheless, it is interesting to see Ethereum at such a low price for such a good project. I'm a very big fan of Ethereum. I do have problems with Ethereum. Ethereum, like, uh, well, I'm not going to get into all of them today, but I do have some problems with Ethereum that I think EOS solves a little bit better. But nevertheless, it is a good project with good developers, and I do think it's worth a lot more than $98. Does that mean we want to go and buy into Ethereum or any of these other projects that we might think are good projects at the moment just because they're down a lot and just because they're at really low valuations? Absolutely not, guys. You got to be careful about buying into cryptocurrencies or buying into anything investment wise really just because it's down on the day or down over the last week or even down over the last year. You really want to try and find a bottom or at least try to get some idea of where the bottom is before you just go and throw money at it because that would be what is known as catching a falling knife because for all we know, Ethereum could be trading at half of this over the next couple of days. Just because it's below its underlying intrinsic value, at least I think it is in my opinion, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to return to that underlying intrinsic value anytime soon. Anyway, Stellar's doing really well here. It's doing a Stellar, as you might say. It's sitting up here in the number four slot, taking over Bitcoin Cash. Do you guys remember when Ethereum was up at number two and Bitcoin Cash was up here at number three or four? And a lot of people were saying that Bitcoin Cash was going to flip in Ethereum. Yeah, I remember that. Didn't happen, but it's kind of interesting to look back on it now because Bitcoin Cash is trading at a fifth of what Ethereum is and XRP is actually taking over Ethereum. A lot of things have changed here in 2018 in a very interesting way, one of which being that Bitcoin Cash has lost a ton of valuation. Bitcoin Cash was trailing behind Ethereum not very far for a long time. And in fact, it did go above Ethereum in market capitalization a couple of times earlier on in the year. If you come to Bitcoin dominance and you zoom into the first half of the year, and actually I think that happened in December, the, the event that I'm thinking of, Bitcoin Cash did pass Ethereum for about half an hour or so. I remember that happening. I think it was in December. So if you go to the uh, Bitcoin dominance chart, then you'll be able to see where that happened. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. My point here is Bitcoin Cash is down by 15% today. And the entire market is really not doing that well. Bitcoin S V of all cryptocurrencies is up today by about 13.65% and really is the only gainer in today's market. We have a couple of gainers with two or three percentage points, one, two, three percentage points. 
Nothing really to write home about. Mobile Go, Made Safe Coin, Dai, and USD Coin are the only other cryptocurrencies beside Bitcoin SV that are in the green today. The vast majority of the market is in the red, and we do see a lot of double-digit losers. Waves being down exactly 20% at the time of recording this video, of course. Bitcoin Cash being one of the biggest losers in today's video, and Binance Coin being one of the also also being one of the biggest losers after the news of the Binance Coin. After the news of the new block, uh, the new blockchain that Binance is working on has kind of had its effect on the market, and Binance Coin is coming back down to what perhaps is a more uh, reasonable valuation for itself. Anyway, not a whole lot to discuss here on Coin Market Cap. I say after talking for the last three minutes here, but there's really not a lot to discuss here other than the fact that market capitalization is getting dangerously close to a hundred billion dollars. We used to call a hundred billion dollar market cap on Bitcoin the Hoffman line that was broken about a month ago or so now, not even that long ago. It was broken in November, and we saw that. Uh, the total market capitalization was sitting around $200 billion at the time. Uh, we're quite a bit below that now. A lot of people for a long time have been talking about uh, capitulation for Bitcoin or capitulation for the Bitcoin market and hoping, not necessarily hoping, but at least predicting that Bitcoin was going to see some kind of major final capitulation down to price levels in between two and $4,000. And I discounted that possibility for a long time. You guys know I'm not shy about saying where I was wrong. I discounted that possibility for a long time. I have made a video on it. It seems that they were right, though, and that's kind of what I want to talk about in today's video, is the fact that in the light of new evidence, you have to take your old your old positions, and if they're wrong, you have to throw them out, and you have to learn from them, and you have to be able to be the man and change your mind in the light of new evidence. And right now, that's what seems to be happening over the last month or so. It seems like Bitcoin is going through what a lot of people have dubbed a capitulation phase, and it seems like that is what is going on. And I had always said before we went below $6,000, I've said it so many times in so many different instances that I can't even think of a time to quote myself on it because I said it like 20 times in 20 different videos. But I always said that if Bitcoin went below $6,000, I was expecting it to go to $3,000 or $4,000. Somewhere in that region, I was expecting it to pull back there because of the way the bear market played out on the on uh, older on older charts in 2014 and 15. I'd always thought that. And I'd also always figured that it would probably be about $3,000 for many different reasons. And I still, at the time being, think that Bitcoin is probably destined to go to $3,000. Especially over the last couple of hours, I feel like that's being validated a little bit more because Bitcoin's dropping here. Over the last hour or so, and probably over the next few hours, Bitcoin has been moving up. When you guys see this video, Bitcoin very well may be trading up above $3,700 again on Coinbase. We do seem to have a little bit of very short-term bullish momentum, and I do mean very short-term. But my point is here, on the longer-term time frames, on the hourly chart, the four-hourly chart, and even on the daily chart, it does seem that Bitcoin is a little bit more bearish than bullish, and I could very easily see Bitcoin coming down to $3,000. Now, I've talked about that a lot in the previous video, but there's a couple different things that I want to discuss in this video. One of them is this wedge right here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this longer-term consolidation pattern that we've been discussing here so that we can see this a little bit better. But Bitcoin, excuse me, is in this wedge right now. And normally you would expect Bitcoin to break bullish out of this wedge. And while it is possible that Bitcoin does break bullish out of this, I don't think it's going to. I think Bitcoin is probably going to end up breaking downwards or at least continue trading sideways and, and to the downside. Because like I've said in pr many other previous videos, Bitcoin very recently, right back over here, just about a week ago or so, had a good opportunity to start a new rally. It had everything that we needed. We saw that the MACD on the daily chart was bullish, for example. As we can see right here, we saw the MACD turn bullish just recently. It's about to turn bearish again, more than likely. We saw that RSI was pumping again. We saw stochastic RSI had just move in, moved into the overbought region, which is actually a, which is actually an indicator of bullish strength, which a lot of people don't realize that. But when RSI, for example, is moving up, when stochastic RSI is moving up, that's actually when that first starts happening is generally a bullish momentum indicator because how did that start moving up? How did the RSI and stochastic RSI start moving up? Well, the chart started moving up. So typically it's a reflection of bullish exuberance when RSI and stochastic RSI start moving up. But now that they've lingered up here at higher levels than they were for a little while, that starts to change. After you've been up here and overbought on stochastic RSI for a couple of days, you're kind of bullish. This territory right here was bullish for stochastic RSI. That movement right there, this movement right here was bullish for stochastic RSI, but now that we've been up here for a little while, it generally starts to gradually turn bearish, and the longer we stay up here, the longer we linger up here, the more likely it's going to come back down to the bearish side, to the oversold side. So that's one other thing I want to point out, is that the technicals, while they were looking bullish a week ago, and while Bitcoin did have the opportunity to start a rally a week ago, it didn't take it, and the bu and the bulls, in my opinion, were quite a bit more strong a week ago, and did have a stronger case for the bullish side a week ago than they do now. So if there was going to be a rally in the last two weeks, or in the the next two also, it seems that it would have happened about a week ago and we didn't see it happen. So that's why I want to bring to your attention is that while Bitcoin does still look kind of bullish, just not even just because we're down below $4,000 and because we would expect to see Bitcoin form some kind of bottom and have some kind of bounce, 
the technicals that were saying we were going to have a bullish rally have already kind of been exhausted because they've already shown their indicators and Bitcoin did uh, just decided not to have a rally at that time. With all that said, where is Bitcoin headed? Now, like I said, guys, I've said for a long time that I expect it to go down to $3,000. And some of you guys may have not seen the video or two that I've talked about this. So I want to discuss again why I believe $3,000 is a very proper bottom. One reason, of course, and I'm going to be brief here because I know a lot of you guys have heard this before. One thing, and I'm going to show you something I haven't shown you before either. One thing that I've talked about is that $3,000 used to be an all-time high back over here. That's a very big deal. Another thing is that, th is that $3,000 is 85% retrace from all-time high for $20,000, which is exactly what what Bitcoin did in the previous bull market. We have to go on the Bitfinex chart to see that. Bitcoin retraced about 85% in this bear market. If we were to repeat history, Bitcoin would have a price target of almost exactly $3,000. Also, if we come out to the weekly chart, then we see that the 200 weekly simple moving average, a very important moving average in my opinion, a very important moving average. I want to—I don't want to understate that. An important moving average is sitting down here around 3,100 to 3,200. And also the 50 weekly, excuse me, the 50 monthly simple moving average is sitting down here around 3,000. At the time, being anyway, since Bitcoin hasn't found support on a well-defined level, for example, $3,500, well, we did find support on $3,500, but we haven't found a well-defined level of support on a longer-term moving average, and we haven't found a level of support on a on a, uh, a level divisible by a thousand, like $5,000, $4,000, $6,000 just yet. Since we haven't done that, it seems to me that we're probably going to go lower until we find that, and $3,000 looks to be that. So are we going to go to $3,000? My money is on yes. I think we're probably going to head down there over the next couple of weeks. It may take another month or two. It may see We may see Bitcoin drag out and just drag its heels and continue trading sideways for a little while, but in eventuality, I think the permanent bottom for Bitcoin at this point is going to be somewhere around $3,000 with the information that I have now. Now, of course, the market can develop, and that opinion can change, and a lot of people, I, I want want to make a point here is that just because an opinion changes doesn't mean the opinion before was wrong. It can, it can An opinion can change in the light of new evidence. There may be evidence to the contrary of what I just said that hasn't appeared yet. So when I or any other technical analyst or even when you change your opinion on what you think a market is going to do, don't one, don't take that as being wrong. And two, if you think it is wrong, use it as a learning experience. Don't use it as a tool to attack someone, for example. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for the technical analysis in today's video. Tell me in the comments section down below what you think of that. Is Bitcoin finally going to head to $3,000? And if so, is that going to be a permanent level of support? I do think it's a good candidate for a level of support for a permanent bottom and it really does seem to line up with the time frame of Bitcoin turning into an accumula uh, Bitcoin moving into an accumulation phase over the next couple of months and moving on into a bull market sometime around halfway through 2019, maybe a little bit later than that. Like I said, tell me in the comments section down below what you think about that. Here at the end of the video, I want to go ahead and ask for a helping hand because I've asked you guys for help with computer problems. If you guys are at all interested in this, feel free to listen. If not, well, the technical analysis is basically over. I'm talking to the, like five of you who actually care. I almost didn't get to record this video because my computer is, uh, it, my computer hates me and I wanted to tell you guys what was going on. So basically when I turn my computer on, and this is really weird, I know this isn't technical analysis, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm desperate. When I turn my computer on, my monitors don't turn on and it's very odd. What I have to do is I have to, I have to pull the case off my, uh, or the glass off my computer case, uninstall the RAM, reinstall the RAM, and then when I turn the computer on, about 80% about of the time, the monitors will actually come on. What, what I mean by the monitors will come on is that the monitors, if I turn the computer on, otherwise just don't turn on. What seems to be happening is that there's some kind of boot sequence stuck with the motherboard, and if I take the RAM out, it clears that, and then the monitors turn on properly. It turns on in safe mode. I have to go into normal mode. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I switched the GPU slot. I moved it to another PCI 16 slot, and that seemed to fix it also. I don't know exactly what's going on. If you guys have ever had this problem, tell me in the comments section down below what you think might fix that. It might be just a defective RAM stick or something. I'm not exactly sure. So tell me what you think about that down in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.